Hello, this is Andy here. This is one of the multiple videos discussing 40 gate. Today we gonna see uh, how exactly the 40 gate GUI looks and what all options we have in the 40 gate GUI. I'm gonna cover all these options starting from the dashboard and network interface. In the network interface, we will see how to do the point-to-point -point configuration, how exactly it looks, how exactly the uh, bundle interface looks. And uh, in the system, we can see uh, the HA configuration and other system related uh, configuration. In the policies and objects, you can see how exactly the ACL looks and uh, uh, the objects and object groups, uh, including the services as well. In the security profiles, we have option where we can create a separate profile like uh, for the IPS and application controller and web filtering lot of other security fabric uh, features are available in this section the next section uh, we gonna see how exactly uh, the vpn options looks uh, like side to side then ssl vpn it is pre pretty much similar to what we see in other firewalls like asc and checkpoint in the next we uh, we have option user and devices where you can create user groups uh, which can be used for SSL VPN and uh, even for ID firewall like identity uh, uh, firewall where you can integrate your LDAP and AD servers to the next generation firewall. And by the way, the uh, the 40 gate 200 e what we are gonna see today is the next generation firewall which has all the features uh, including the IPS and uh, uh, threat management into the one single box. So we can we will also see the logs and reporting section where uh, you can see the live traffic and uh, where exactly the traffic is getting blocked and you can deep dive into the traffic uh, to resolve some of the uh, issues while doing troubleshooting. And in the monitoring session, we can see a uh, 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 lot of uh, monitoring option like DSCP server users and you can see the SSL VPN users lot of other options oh it's giving a snooze to me yep by the way it's a good friday tomorrow yep yep, yep. happy good friday to all so let's let's me uh, uh let me log into the uh, demo firewall i have a demo firewall here which is live uh, i and i will walk you through the directly from the live firewall and I will also show you how exactly you can log into the 40 gate demo firewall at the end of this video so that you can also do some practical sessions directly on the live firewall. But yeah, definitely you will be having only read only access. That is more than enough for us to do the practice. So yeah, so so we have 40 gate 200 E here. Uh, if you want to see how exactly uh, the 40 gate 2000 E uh, looks. Uh, let's go to the data sheet uh, This is how the 40 gate e looks so it's a pretty uh, big firewall which you can use in a data center and even for the large enterprise uh, uh, Network infrastructure where you have multiple copper ports starting from 1 to 32 and you have six fiber ports so it's not a modular one where you uh, you can add some of the modules um, then if you see a lot of other features you will get in this it's and by the way it's a next generation firewall so you will get the utm inbuilt and uh, i'm not gonna uh, go through the uh, uh, deep specification level because yeah our focus will be on covering the dashboard today uh, by the way, uh, you can uh, visit to the website and see what all uh, features you you get in 2000E. So yeah, this is so once you have uh, the initial configuration done on your 40 gate, uh, you can access the GUI. I will show you how to do the initial configuration in the coming videos. But today, uh, let's go through all the options what we have in GUI. So in the dashboard, uh, you can see uh, you have a lot of other, uh, 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 I mean like you can add a lot of widget, whatever you want, uh, like uh, 
uh, disk usage and the bandwidth and let's say like you want to see how much public bandwidth uh, uh, what is the uh, south north north south traffic going into the your network so you can add a bandwidth interface here like whatever public interface you have just select and add it so you can see those uh, a graph like statistics for your public interface and uh, yep not much here i'm yep so we will directly go to the uh, network section so in the network section you have interfaces where you can see uh, the actual physical interface and uh, yep so i have we we have done some grouping here so initially when you get you will not get any grouping here i mean like but you just to make your uh, uh, configuration easy to understand you can create a multiple zones here so yeah so it says like ha port uh, we are calling port one as a ha here you so you have lot of interfaces here so the moment you click here it will be highlighted here okay and you can go inside and mm, yep it's pretty slow yeah once you go inside you will get all these options where uh, you can uh, decide the role like what exactly it is van dmc and lan this doesn't make any sense it's just for a reference and uh, you can give name and alias name and you can give the um, the physical interface ip or if you want to do it from the dhcp you can do it from dhcp and what all options you want to allow like you on this interface you want to allow ping you want to allow sm snmp and lot of other protocols uh, the standard protocols we use to uh, i mean like to um, insert the traffic from this interface like ssh and http and the https so simple example like if you enable ssh so definitely you can uh, do ssh to this ip to log into this firewall so that's how it is so and at the end like you get enable and disable so you can disable the port and enable it once the configuration is done and uh, in the uh, uh, so when you have read write and the full access you will get a save option here where you need to click on a save to uh, to save the configuration and uh, yeah i will also wanted to show you how exactly the bundle interface looks so as you know like the bundle interface is very uh, 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 it's important whenever you want to club up the um, two interface to increase the uh, bandwidth at the same time you will get the port level redundancy as well let's say if you are doing uh, if you are bundling the port number 37 and 38 uh, that means like if any of the link goes down any of the one let's say 30 37 goes down the traffic can still go through the 38 port so that is the power of bundling the interface and at the at the same time let's say like 37 year it is a 10 gig port and the 38 is 10 gig port you are clubbing both the uh, uh, the uh, bandwidth of that port into the one single bundle that means like when you are doing a bundle for 37 and 38 so you are getting uh, like 20 gig bandwidth at uh, one single point of time yeah so yeah so the bundle interface looks like this uh, so i mean like you do a bundle so as of now it is one single port but uh, in the bundle interface you can add multiple ports and uh, yeah in the same you can see uh, the lot of other uh, interfaces are configured based on the vlan it's like uh, a sub interface what we create in asa based on the vlan id so every vlan id will act like uh, a vrf what we do in switch we call it as like vrf we segregate the traffic so here in the firewall you segregate the traffic by using the vlans okay so yeah so in the live firewall uh, uh, i mean like when you have complete access you will have a create option here you can create uh, uh, interface you can create zone you can create aggregate interface 
lot of uh, options we have and in the uh, coming section um, in the coming videos i will definitely uh, uh, do a, a complete lab section so i will show you how exactly configure all the interfaces so for time being we will only go uh, do a walk through with what all options we have in this firewall so you have dns here you can configure your own dns and uh, uh, these are the uh, default 40 guard servers i mean it's it's a dns provided by the uh, the 40 net you can specify your own dns as well and uh, let's see so you have other option yeah the pretty cool feature on this 40 gate next generation firewall is the sd wan so guys you know uh, the sd wan is one of the hot topic in the market uh, so with this 40 gate firewall with this 40 gate box you can also do sd wan okay and uh, yep we will see see the sd wan configuration and sd wan design in the coming video sections and uh, yep so the next section uh, the uh, important one is the static routes so as you know like like so whatever static route you want so the the default static route goes to your public and uh, the other static routes to your inside subnet and the dmz subnet you can also have policy routes here if you want to do a pbr policy based routes you can add policy routes here and you have a lot of uh, dynamic protocol options like rep ospf bgp and uh, finally the multicast uh, so definitely like if in your environment there is multicast routing going on let's say like one zone to the other zone you want to uh, exchange the multicast starting from LAN to the DMZ or starting from a uh, DMZ to the DMZ you need to enable the multicast routing and in the multicast routing you can mention the rendezvous points okay yep let's go to the other section the system uh, yep as I said like in the system the main uh, uh, the important topic what we want to focus on is HA so uh, definitely in all, uh, many of the organization uh, almost like uh, uh, the business critical uh, operations we use two firewalls where one is acting as a, uh, the master and the other one is slave so here you can see this is the master and this is the slave and uh, uh, in between these firewalls we have two cables like uh, connecting for the HA like port 1 is connecting to the port 1 port 2 is connecting to the port 2 and uh, yeah guys uh, I will say the bringing up the HA is one of the uh, very simple step in the 40 gate uh, that we will see in the next videos and you can configure the SNMP servers here uh, in in your uh, network let's say uh, you have uh, separate uh, uh, the SNMP uh, I mean syslog or something uh, where you want to send the traps you can do configuration here and uh, the other cool feature here is certificates so it's like local certificate and the CA certified whatever certificates you have you can maintain in this section uh, let's see what is this administrator yeah i mean like you can create the uh, the uses you want to uh, manually create any uses uh, without the ldap so you can create the uses here okay let's go to the uh, the other section the policy and objects one of the uh, uh, the important uh, configuration of any of the firewall um, it's configuring the acls so in the ipv4 policy you can configure the acl so i will show you how exactly it looks so let's let's go into this one yep so the policy will look like this what is the incoming interface you need to select the uh, what is the incoming interface or the incoming zone and what is the outgoing interface or it could be outgoing zone and uh, uh, what is the source subnet here it is all and the destination subnet here it is all or you can create an object and call that object here okay let's say like I'm calling a group here 
so it's not allowing uh, as of now because we have read only access and in the schedule like uh, you can create a time based ACL here and in the services you can allow what exactly uh, the ports you want to allow for this traffic flow and accept deny you can enable the NAT here so the one cool feature in 40 gate is uh, you don't need to create a NAT rule separately you don't need to create a fabric security fabric rule separately uh, the everything you just need to uh, enable it in one single ACL so whenever you add ACL you just need to enable it that's it it's it's pretty straightforward and very simple to understand so in the NAT you can use the uh, source NAT uh, where you can see outgoing interface or, or else if you have your own dynamic pool NAT IPs you can add here I will show you uh, where exactly the NAT pools are created and in the security profiles as I said like we uh, uh, it's a next generation firewall so you have a lot of security fabric uh, uh, the features here let's say antivirus you just need to enable it and uh, I mean like enable disable if you want antivirus on this rule uh, let's say like this rule is uh, allowing traffic to go outside or the allowing the traffic from outside to come inside it is definitely mandatory mandatory to uh, uh, it's important to enable the antivirus here and the web filtering and the DNS filter you have application controller here you have IPS and you have SSL inspection okay pretty much uh, similar for IPv6 and uh, yeah multi-card policy uh, as I said like if your multicast traffic is flowing from LAN to DMZ you need to enable a multicast policy here you need to write like uh, source is your LAN and the destination is DMZ and allow the multicast okay and uh, yeah we have other uh, policies like DDoS and uh, IPv6 DDoS I will I will cover all this in the coming videos so yeah the next topic is addresses uh, addresses is nothing but the objects what we create in uh, uh, ASA so it's like uh, you are creating an object for your LAN subnet so let's see I will show you how exactly it looks so the address your name of that address and what is the subnet mask uh, 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 the subnet I mean like the IP and the subnet mask you want to assign for that object that's it so okay so in the 40 gate we call it as addresses and you can also have address group created here so in address groups it's a collection of multiple objects so as you see uh, so we have created uh, address group here so you can add multiple uh, address here in the same uh, group okay yeah so it's like this just save and all these objects will become one single group then we have services here services are nothing but the port numbers what you want to allow on ACL so in the same way like you have lot of inbuilt services uh, in the 40 gate so most of the time uh, uh, frankly speaking you never uh, uh, want to create a new address uh, a new services uh, object here most of the objects whatever you want you uh, those are already inbuilt okay so you can have groups also uh, uh, similar to what we do in addresses let's say you have one single customer where uh, 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 you already know uh, what all services need to be allowed for him so you can create a group and uh, just call that group in one single ACL okay so we have virtual IPs option here virtual IPs are nothing but uh, the one-to-one -one static NAT what we do in ASA so it's like uh, the uh, the 10.88 we are doing a static NAT to 172.30 so yeah uh, it's a pretty uh, uh, straightforward but uh, only uh, changes here uh, in the 48 we are calling it as virtual IP uh, whereas in uh, normal term in the uh, we call it as one-to-one -one NAT static NAT 
and we have IP pools here. So as I said, like uh, uh, in the NAT, okay, you can have uh, the PAT uh, where you have port address translation. You can do overload uh, if you have, uh, let's say, like you have 10 public IPs and you want to do a NAT to a uh, NAT overload to that 10 public IPs. You can create IP pool here. So it's an overload starting from 105 to 105 that means it's one single ip as of now here let's say if you have six ips starting from 105 to 1010 so you can write a range like this and once this ip pool is created you can call uh, that pool for the nat uh, by selecting the uh, ip pool option then you have traffic shaping and these are like um, the traffic shaping SLA features for the SD-WAN. Uh, yeah. So let's go to the security profiles. So in the security profiles, as we saw, uh, we were enabling the uh, IPS, which is intrusion prevention and application controller. Uh, we have DNS filter, we have web filter, we have antivirus. I will show you uh, the uh, cool feature in intrusion prevention. Uh, so I mean like uh, in the 40 kit, the, it is very simple to do an intrusion prevention uh, uh, configuration for your ACLs. You just need to, uh, uh, I mean, create a group and uh, uh, go, go with the default one, which is already available in the uh, intrusion prevention because as you know we have thousands of signatures uh, in the uh, uh, in the 40 gate uh, database and uh, daily the lot of signatures are coming uh, uh, daily like as the malwares are getting increased so the 40 gate is creating uh, its own signatures to tackle those uh, uh, those threats okay so yeah so you, you just need to go with the default configuration i will show you how exactly to to do that default configuration in the coming videos and we have application control here so we have uh, d visibility uh, to the uh, different inbuilt application controls which are already uh, uh, available in the 40 gate it keeps on pulling the uh, information from the cloud as you uh, let's see i will show you how exactly it get updates so if you see this license okay it says web filtering antivirus ips so these are license right so it will continuously uh, pull the information from the 40 cloud i mean uh, wherever the 40 gate is maintaining the repository so it will come uh, uh, continuously uh, pull the uh, the signatures and uh, uh, the other updates for all this security uh, fabrics yep so in the web application this is WAF uh, I, I, I wanted to show you web filtering how exactly it looks yeah yeah this is very uh, important for the network guys because they want to uh, stop the unwanted and uh, 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 congestion creating your network so definitely I mean like uh, some of the uh, uh, so there are already a uh, uh, predefined categories here so you just need to uh, allow or you just need to deny it and that's it so let's say like the adult content so as of now we are just monitoring it I mean in the monitoring you will uh, see an option in the monitor that who all are accessing this adult content and uh, so you can I mean like you can have that visibility what is going in your network but uh, uh, it is always better to block this traffic and because it's unnecessarily uh, uh, consuming your office bandwidth let's say security risk so definitely you just need to block it So you will get a block option here okay let's go to the uh, vpn section so as i said in the vpn section we have similar options what we have in other firewalls so you can create vpn tunnels but the cool uh, uh, the part here is you can uh, you will get a wizard here so you can just go through the wizard and configure the uh, vpn tunnels 
so you have uh, the ssl vpn portal here so definitely i mean like when you create a ssl you just need to uh, uh, you you can go to the full access portal and uh, allow split tunnel and uh, your ssl vpn interface source interface inside interface you can do all this configuration here and uh, yep listening on which port and uh, what all certificate it will use all this information in the users and devices you can uh, create the users and you can group them you can add your LDAP servers. This is very uh, important in the next generation firewalls because, uh, okay, once you do the integration with your LDAP and AD servers, uh, you in the in the logs, okay, you can directly see the name of the users. So those are pretty cool uh, uh, the features what we get in next generation firewall. So you can see all the uh, the you will have the identity visibility on the firewall itself. You have uh, radius server options here. So I will not go into the Wi-Fi because we have enabled a Wi-Fi feature in this one. So that's why it is showing Wi-Fi. Let's go to the logs and reports. Uh, this is one of the um, the important traffic while when whenever we do troubleshooting. So in the forward traffic, you can see uh, uh, your traffic going through the uh, uh, your 40 gate firewall so yeah these are the live traffic you can see uh, what is the time and the source and what is the device so here in the device it is only showing mac address as of now but as i said like uh, if you do the ldap integration and all you can directly see the username here okay and this is a destination and the application name and what is the result so you can click on this one to have a de detailed information about that traffic yeah so you can see uh, it's going to the uh, the public and uh, what option you want yeah and wh what what policy it is matching to Okay. Yep. Pretty much uh, detail information you will get here. Yep. So in the multicast traffic, again the uh, the same uh, uh, the traffic related to the multicast. In this one, I wanted to show you how exactly the filter works. So let's say if you want to filter one single IP, let's say uh, so let's say like 10.88.210 and 32. So you just need to go. Uh, to the source and pick whatever IP you want. Okay. It's pretty slow. Yep, there we go. So, yep, it's now it's filtering uh, with the source IP uh, ending with dot 99. So, in this way, you can do a filter and uh, uh, yeah, I mean like so as I said like it's an uh, they it it already has the inbuilt application uh, uh, detail uh, uh, The application controller what we saw so yeah with I mean like it's it has a great uh, Visibility into the different applications. You can see like this traffic was related to the Amazon AWS You can see it. This is related to the syslog this is related to the Microsoft. So all this information, detail information you will get in next generation firewall. Sniffer traffic, you want to capture some traffic, you can do it here. And uh, yep, any security events, you can see the security events here. Security and uh, even, I mean like VPN events, HA event you can select select whatever events you want to see you can see those events here and also it shows the uh, the risk level uh, uh, it uh, this traffic uh, is going through I mean like uh, what kind of uh, how much risk it is let's say this says it's a critical the virtual cluster detected member join so maybe like some other member is trying to join the cluster and uh, you have yeah i mean you can see uh, what all blocks 
uh, happening in your uh, uh, in your network so yeah this is action detected see you can see there is a botnet coming inside so it says detected it's not getting blocked so i think uh, no they are uh, they put it into uh, uh, the monitoring mode so if it is on a block mode it will directly block it In the application controller, yeah, you can see, uh, I mean, like it's trying to uh, 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 do the application inspection. So there is an SNMP uh, a bulk request, so which is getting passed. So that all depends like what all you configured on the application controller, what, what exactly you are blocking and what exactly you are allowing. Threat weight, uh, yeah you have uh, uh, option to decide uh, no. uh, I mean like you can in the options okay so you can decide uh, uh, the I mean like category uh, the action the event and that event uh, uh, how exactly it matters for you so my suggestion would be uh, uh, not to edit it so let's go with the uh, the default one uh, which we get from the box email alert yeah. let's go to the monitoring section so as i said like if you configure the dhcp you can see the dhcp lease ips information here if you have uh, uh, let's say ssl vpn so you can see ssl vpn uh, users logging information here and uh, what all we have for the client if you I mean like it's again related to the SSL like if your users are using for the client you can get all those information here so yeah that's all uh, from the GUI side so as I said uh, uh, compared to the other firewalls I feel the 40 get GUI is much easy even if uh, a little knowledge into the firewall and understanding how exactly the firewall works you can build your own architecture uh, uh, by using the 40 get so that's easy it is yeah. so in the coming videos uh, i will show you uh, one by one section uh, where i will show you how to configure the interfaces and how to do the static routing basic static routes so that the you know, at least the traffic will go through your firewall then later section we can write ACLs and uh, uh, I mean like tricky ACLs like when it comes to multiple DMC zones in your network and uh, we will also uh, cover the security fabric yeah that's all thanks a lot